All right, today we're going over everything you need to know when it comes to protein and building muscle. Let's get after it. Good, better, closer, perfect. Now I've given general recommendations in the past, like make sure you're making protein the priority when you're planning out your macros, but if you're anything like me, you're never satisfied. You're always trying to push that upper limit. So when you're trying to figure out your protein intake, you're immediately faced with a shitload of questions. Like, what's the max amount of protein I can utilize per meal? And once I figure out that limit, is there a way to biohack my body to push it even higher with the use of something like digestive enzymes? Or does it vary from protein source to protein source? Obviously, the source of protein matters. So does the subsequent amino acid profile. But is there a way to stack the deck in our favor? That way we can put on even more muscle, say supplementing with leucine? Fuck if I know. So we're gonna go on a little journey today to figure out the exact answer to all these questions. First, by seeing what everybody else is saying. That way we can make sure we're adding to the conversation. Then we'll check out the research to see if that guides us. And then finally, lean into my personal favorite, trial and error, to see if it actually bears out in the real world. So let's first start out by seeing what these other assholes are saying. Why do you think he's gonna take off his shirt and flex for a protein video? It's a real low cut wife beater. So I think little Jeff was onto something when he talked about using lean body mass as opposed to just regular body mass to calculate the grams per pound you should take in per day. Problem is, you're relying on people to know exactly how fat they really are. In my experience, no clue. In my experience, you ask somebody with a dad bod, they're gonna say, I'm about 12%, not as lean as I like to be. And then if you ask somebody who's one happy meal away from being on my 600 pound life, they're gonna say, you know, it's really gotten away from me. I'm probably about 20%. So as much as I like the idea, I still think it's gonna be wildly inaccurate if you're relying on people not to lie to themselves so they don't feel so bad about the size of their muffin top. And that Andrew guy that was on Joe Rogan's podcast brought up a study that shows people might have an easier time ingesting protein in the morning versus the evening, but that just becomes another question to add to our long list of fucking questions. So let's get to the research. God, this is boring. <laughs> be so easy to liven these studies up. If I was one of these scientists, I would do everything exactly the same, but I'd feed one guy a shit sandwich for every single meal and record the findings. So if you've done any research yourself, you probably found the same thing I did. Most of the studies, not the most helpful. Half the time they're contradicting your previous study. Another time they're just throwing up their hands like, we have no idea. Other times they use elderly women. Really? But I gathered enough of it, so we can definitely gain some insight, hopefully. Now, as much as I love digging through the weeds all day, I realized I was just feeding my own confirmation bias, but let me share that with you anyways. To the person that says you can only absorb 20, 25 grams per meal and there's no reason to eat more than that, I mean, if you wanna keep that belief and keep swimming in that medium shirt of yours, by all means, go for it. But if you're open to admitting you're an asshole, you might wanna check out this study that shows that age, body mass as well as other things matter, and it could be upwards of 0.275 grams per pound of body mass per meal, which means a 200 pound man, you're getting it in 53, 54 grams of protein in a single meal. No fucking way. This study shows BCAAs do nothing, but I'm still gonna hold out hope. Like the high school version of myself, holding out hope for the girl I was best friends with to suddenly realize she doesn't wanna be just best friends, she actually loves me, and wants to plow. This one talks about the anabolic window, and guess what? It's a thing. And there's really nothing special here, nothing you haven't heard before. Take 20 to 40 grams pre and post workout. But what it does say is if you're gonna err on one side, err on the side of taking too much because there's little to no detriment in doing that. So to me, that's an open invitation to taking way too much. Thank you. Here's the thing, as much as I wanted to end today's video giving a bunch of ironclad numbers that everybody can follow and easily get results, it's just not that simple. And the truth is, no one's coming for you. So if you're serious about making a transformation, then you gotta take ownership and start treating your body like a damn science experiment and seeing what actually works for you. But I can give you some fundamental things to follow. First, make sure you're always using the principle of highest and best. Get the highest and best quality protein you possibly can with every single meal. If you're in a deficit, make sure the majority of your calories are coming from protein. Start putting a little more thought in your pre and post-workout nutrition. Me personally, if there's carbs on my diet, that's where they're going. And finally, sometimes we buy supplements like BCAAs, not because we know they work, because they probably don't. It's just a good healthy habit that we don't wanna give up because we could be doing meth. And if you haven't checked out the full or garage gym program, I'll leave those linked below. Again, it's 30 days, 20 videos, 20 bucks, 
pretty damn simple. Also, if you need help with your diet, here's a video that goes over how to get your macros set up. And most importantly, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and get after it, get growing. Talk to you soon.